So these next few questions coming up kind of goes beyond your textbook. So they didn't come from your textbook. Um, dare I say they're almost quote unquote exam level quality, wink, wink. In any case, uh, it's all stuff you know. In any case, it's still applying the same principle you know. It might be a little bit lengthier, and it might involve a few more steps. But you still follow the same process, right? If you follow from the basic principle and apply those, you should be fine. So if you read the question, then let's read the question, right? You have a box sitting at the bottom of the slope, and then you give it some initial speed up the slope, and all the way back down. Yeah. And this box would slow down and come back down. Seem to be a lot going on. Let's draw a little let's draw a little sketch of it. So here's your 20 degree slope. At the very bottom, you give it a kick. So it has some initial velocity. But then you don't touch it anymore. So then through just going up the ramp, i.e. gravity, and also rubbing against the ramp friction, it slows down, right? So it starts fast and slow, then slow. Eventually it comes to a stop somewhere up there. And then we're told that it does come to a stop and slide back down. So we don't have to check for static friction at the very top there. And it does come back down, right? But on the way back down, friction acts in the opposite direction. So um, we have to kind of analyze this motion in two separate steps. So therefore, I'd like to instead of drawing it all in one picture, I could draw like a series of comics. I could draw a series of pictures instead, showing things happening at different times. So the first interesting kind of the first interesting time, of course, is at the very beginning. I'll call that T0 at 0 second. Then the next time that would be interesting is when the box gets to the very top, right? Same ramp, more or less. Somehow at the very top, you come to a stop. And we'll call this T1 for now because we have no clue what time that might be. And in this time, the box would have traveled some distance, some maximum distance up the slope. And I like to reiterate here, when the box is stopped like that, normally we would have to check for static friction because it's totally possible that friction is strong enough to just not have the box slide down again. But since we are told that it does slide back down, um, there's no need to check for it. There'll be a video later on where there'll be a video later on to show the process of checking for static friction. And it is quite lengthy. So I guess they just for this question want to sidestep that and focus on doing the kinematics part. And then from this time, the next interesting time is when the box are sliding down and speed up. And then the next time we'd be interested in is uh, when the box gets back to the bottom of the slope. Right, traveling that same distance, going back to the original spot. And now it's going to have some other speed, right? We could call this T2, and that will be V2. So a series of time that we're interested in. 
Of course, if you focus on the question itself, they ask you how much time passes before it comes back down. So the actual final answer is T2. Now the question is, how do we get at this answer? Well, it takes a few, a number of steps. And sometimes I just sketch out like um, a little bit of what I have and what I can relate to try and map out how exactly would I get there? Usually I start at the very end, right? In this case, uh, to get T2, I need to find the time that passes between this bit, which is when it was going up, separately from the time between these two bits when it was going down, right? So. I can say that my to get T2, I need both I can say that to get T2, I can say that in order to get T2, I need delta T from 0 to 1, and then delta T from 1 to 2, right? These aren't 1 second and 2 second, it's just time 1, time 2. And so what do I need to find the T, the delta T between 0 and 1, which is the time it spends going up? Well, to find that, I need to find, I use kinematics. Well, to find that, I use kinematics, right? So that's going to be, I need the upward acceleration. I need the given um, original velocity. And how do I find So to find delta t between 0 and 1, I will need to use kinematics, which would involve using um, the v naught, which is given, and then also the acceleration as it was going up, right? The slowdown. And how do I find the acceleration upwards? Well, that's from f equals ma. as it was going up. Similarly, for t from 1 to 2, we will need to use kinematics. But for the downward strip, it has a, it's going to have a different acceleration because now you're sliding down the slope, friction acts in the opposite direction as before. And not only that, you also need to know how far you need to travel. So you can get that from the kinematics here as well. So then that kind of maps out our solution path, right? We do F equals MA for the up to get us the D max and the time as it goes up. And then we do F equals MA to get the acceleration using the using the D max. We can then find out the time it takes for it to slide down. Then we just sum the two time up to get our answer. So then, because we have to do f equals ma, we have to use a free body diagram. We have a free body diagram as it goes up. Here is 
the box, right? And the only thing it's touching, you know, after you finish kicking it, as it slides up, it doesn't touch you anymore. It only touches the ramp. So any contact surface, there's a normal force pushing normal and away from the surface. And then because we know the box is going up and sliding up, friction must point down to try and slow down that relative sliding. And then because you're on Earth, you got mg. Then we similarly do the same analysis for when it goes down. Right, and we already mentioned the only major difference here is you're still touching just the surface. So you have Fn. The only major difference is that the friction now acts up the slope because you're now sliding down the slope. Mg remains the same, like that. So hopefully that kind of maps out what is it that we have to do. So let's just go ahead and do that. Looking at, let's do the going up case first, because that's what we have all the information about. Given this free body diagram, we need to complete it by selecting an appropriate coordinate axis and no, seeing that all the motion happens along the slope. That's why we would choose our axes to go with the slope. This means that we will have to Decompose our mg. This is pretty standard stuff. So we write out some of forces statement then. Got Fn in the positive j, your friction force in the negative i, and then your two components for. Your mg, both negative in this case, the way we defined it. And that, of course, equals the upwards acceleration in the i hat direction. Yes, we know it's supposed to go in the negative i, but I kind of like to keep the um, negative sign within the variable so that when we use, do kinematics, we just sub in the whole negative number. So in order to get at the acceleration in the i, we need the friction. But in order to get that, we need to know the normal force. You know, all pretty standard stuff. You've done a bunch of inclined planes before. And I always like to write out the sum of forces, just in case that there are other forces involved or that the acceleration is in zero in that direction. Right? Then Fn, in those cases, would not be just equal to mg cosine 20. So it's always good to go through the motion to check it properly. But in this case, it is. And so we know that the size of the friction force is equal to mu k in this case, which is given. And so times, times the normal force. Like that. Then similar, we look at the I hat component. Where we can now replace FF with what we know about
now that we can replace FF with other things and expand a little bit, and you'll see that the mass happens in every term, so it cancels out. And this is you've seen this many times in all kinds of inclined plane crash, inclined plane, you know, in all kinds of inclined plane questions. Where an object is just interacting mostly with gravity and the friction, so everything depends on mass. So it doesn't matter how heavy the box is, which is great because they didn't give us how heavy the box is. So then, if you sub in the numbers. You find that the upwards acceleration is this number. Keeping lots of digits because this is not the final answer, and indeed it does have negative to say that it actually goes down the slope, which is what we expect as it slows down. So now that we do have. The acceleration. We can then move on to kinematics, right? F equals m a gets you the acceleration. You take that acceleration over, to do kinematics. And in this case, for the entire motion going up, the acceleration is constant. So we can use our trusty old we can use our trusty old kinematics formulas. We'll start with this one first, just to find the time. We know that v one is equal to, know that v one is equal to zero, and we know that the difference in time between zero and one is t one minus t zero, which is also zero. So that's just t one. Cleaning that up a little bit, you can see that we have zero plus my v o, which was given. The acceleration, which was the thing we just found, times t1. Solving for t1, again keeping lots of digits, we get that. But earlier we mentioned that in order to do the second part, we also need to know how far we have traveled upwards. So we'll use this other kinematics equation with the displacement. Yes, we could have used the uh, um, v vf square minus vo square plus two a. We could have used the yes, 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 yes. We could have used the Vf square minus Vo square equals two AD as well, but since we got the time already, this one is sometimes a little more straightforward to calculate. And all that gets you this number, which we'll keep for the second part.
Then moving on to the part as we go down. Again, we assign the same corner system and breaking down the MG. We have a very similar sum of forces statement. Except that friction now acts up the slope, so that's going to be positive i hat. Everything else is the same as before. That's m a down i hat. Again, we look at the j component. No difference there, so saving some writing, we get to the same conclusion as last time. The I hat component is the one that's changed. Again, the mass cancels out very conveniently. Subbing all the numbers and using a calculator. And we get this number. A little sandy check. It Low sandy check, it does make quite a bit of sense because now that friction is working against gravity, we get It makes a lot of sense because now that friction is working against gravity, we would have a much smaller magnitude of acceleration, but it should still point downwards to drag the box back down the slope. So therefore the negative, everything checks out. So knowing now this acceleration, once again, we have constant acceleration all once again, we have constant insertion all the way down. So we can again use our kinematics formula. which would only really get us the change in time between T1 and T2. D2, of course, you're going back down to the original spot. At time two, the box is all the way back at the bottom. D max, which is your position at time one, we found in the last part, there's no speed at the top, right? It stopped at the top. And this acceleration we just found so because there's only t square happening here we don't even have to use the quadratic formula
because we only have t square here, we don't even have to use the quadratic formula. We rearrange. Being careful about um, the one half on the division bottom here, you might need a bracket in your calculator. And the units does turn out to be seconds because you have the meters cancel out. Then the one over second square becomes second square, square root that, getting the right unit. Now we're finally ready to get our answer, which is to sum these two times together. Which gives us 1.04 seconds. So hopefully you saw that each individual part was all stuff we have done many times before. The more advanced problems just tend to have more of the same stuff. So if you know each individual step properly and you label things well and know for each step which speed, which acceleration, which forces we are talking about, then it's just going through then you just have to work through all the different steps.